interesting week. I'm just setting up everything now. Actually, I want to start with some artwork again. I want to make a ending scene. So currently I have this uh, break overlay thing. Uh, this is for uh, doing Haskell. Now we have another one for uh, Scala. I think I have another one for Clojure as well. Uh, but what I want to do is make uh, another image for our fans. Like people to follow. Or but it looks professional, man. So yeah, let's just like Google. <laughs> this is horrible. Um, yeah, let's make artwork. And I thought I would do Haskell, but well, I, I'm gonna do Haskell. Working. So, I was talking to some Scala engineers during the week. Yeah. Trying to explain serving to them is hard. It's a type level, it's just an API type level. Don't worry about it. What? Uh, what are we gonna do today, by the way, is... Um, well, basically what I wanted to do last uh, last time I streamed, but I didn't do because I was refactoring a lot. But we're gonna make... Um, yeah, let's run it, actually. Let's just see what I'm working on. So I'm in the finishing phases of arranging finances. I can definitely uh, working on the other and streaming both. Except I would have less time on my hands, but it probably wouldn't matter at all because at the moment uh, I'm not always streaming, right? Only when I'm in a mood, so. Yeah. Right, we need to fill and improve. So, what I'm making is the ability for employees to specify when they are finished with work. I completely forgot where it was. Uh, update. I think it's update. Edit entry, that's it. No, it was not this one. But this is the file watch. <laughs> so another thing about Scala engineers is that they rely a lot on their IDE to do, basically tell them things about how things work. Kind of disturbing. Then their IDEs themselves are usually custom I have but um yeah that 
po skalach. I think this also modifies the sound of the... Actually, uh, go back and watch that. Telling people I'm gonna do artwork and then start compiling everything. Ah, uh, yeah, we need to run the... Well, so that's what we do now. Enter the shell. So this will um, get in the binaries. For example, like... Press and... This is an environment. Very functional package man. At the company, like where I was, too. They, they use this old stuff, right? They really use Scala, which by itself. Oh, basically, revolves around people. They add a lot of syntax to it, and give more capability. Confuses me. Not elegant. That's it. That's the word. It's complex. That's how I describe this. Just exactly the right. Your things. Your things are working, but it could be more. That's running now. Yeah. Yeah, we need to fix this too. Right, I was thinking about fixing that actually. But I, what I want to know is like, where are these? Oh, I think I made a separate. Uh oh. My project. Yeah, I made a widget. And I'm saying I need to fill in the other one. We have to make write out requests and then we have to... Uh, did I explain this at all? I don't think I have ever explained how this stuff works. No, I didn't even make this on stream, so... Anyway, the idea is that we have an endpoint that uh, uh, basically collects all the user messages based on the state of the system. So it's not really an like, like it's not really, um, well, all the messages are just generated based on the state of the system, like completely stateful. But that state would be the database, but fine. Uh, you could also make like a push, uh, this, uh, this like reads the system and the site user's messages based on. So can you plan? And if you can plan, do you have, uh, any requests that need to be approved and if you have those things then you get a message and we return those and then you can also figure out if you're um, if you have had if you have worked um, to uh, create the write out message we're reading the database and based on that we're deciding if we need to make a message but the other thing you could potentially do is just uh, make a separate table for messages and Create them based on events. However, that would be complex, and I, at the moment, don't see any benefit to it that way. This is pretty straightforward. Do that. Oh, hey, Lumi. <laughs> uh. Should be making artwork, right? Both in 2000. Look at that. Yeah, this is like uh, in uh, inspecting the state of the database, creating the messages, and this is for displaying on the front end. You can do this because uh, this function is in the PG monad, so it's only um, tracks with the database basically. Uh, it's also called 
and we're starting up the app. I think it's in sign or something. Bad name. <laughs> So you get like initial messages. Yeah, that's when you find messages. PG Monet? Then PG Pool connection. So like we're giving the environment a connection and then we can do stuff inside PG. So database. But uh, let's work on artwork instead. <laughs> I like that. I like that idea. Obviously. Actually, I want to have it full screen. Though. Or like a size. Hmm. Don't search for like 1920 times 1080. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. I like this one. Oh, fire them. Artworks. I know. Let's go here and maybe close your on the other one. On the other one. Ah, next.
Uh, I know. I know, I know, I know. I figured it out. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Don't, don't rotate, man. I want to discard it. Yeah. Just the rasterization, I think, automatically. Uh, once you deselect it, you lose a lot of. Uh, I know, it merges it. You just need to say uh, to the lay. You don't have that problem. Ah, yeah. that's bad. I was thinking of putting like the. Um, Inside the sun, because you know, Linux is long. Right. Maybe it's small. Can't do the Haskell anymore. Recently, have been thinking about why I precisely prefer Closure over Haskell for practical work and trying to get things simulated in Haskell to double check my assumption. Oh. Get those things simulated in Haskell to double check my assumption. I have not really tried any closure, so I don't. But um, once I finish the selling outing, I'll maybe in a good position to convince people about different. Yeah. Uh, Thing with the nine times. Sensible, right? Not, not any. Could you at least like tell me what it is? Uh, why I miss this various types of structures. Is this like inheritance? We don't have the situation is because unacceptable.
unacceptable. Not a name for things like Aedris, heterogeneous collections, etc. Although it's slightly different perspective, although sometimes conflated with the idea of generics. I think I think we uh, we use Aedris as well in like servant. If a way to simulate closure symbols, I'm still experimenting. Mm. I've seen the HLA stuff in Servant. They use it to create the API, I think. Backwards one. I want to get a system where I never need to define positional record types in data declarations type classes structural types. But that's like um It's like a H map maybe. So then you can like have different values based on the like the the the, um, the value type is dependent on the key type. And then And then you can also use like um, uh, data, data kind to uh, identify like in collection. Well, you can make it entirely dependent on type because if you use data kinds, then that string would also be part of the type. Well, you could also look at like uh, fi finally tagless or something. HMAP or HLIS, I mean, nitrogen collection where you can describe some. But... Dude, you're looking for um, the thing I built last time uh, with lenses. Okay, we can we can we can talk about that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Username or something. This means uh, we can get it and set it, so we can describe a type, which we can combine at polymorphic level. Uh, in the function, when I have like a uh, name, a, a. I can do something with it, and when I can fire maybe or something. 
can get the concrete username by using the lens. Or we can um, modify it somewhere inside. With this, and then like, you know, it's wrapped, and we can set it. And now, like, you can do this with hash username, but you can add, not, like, another property to it if you want. Um, so I had another one called, like, uh, has entry, maybe, or something? Fine. Has local, yeah, has local start time, for example. So you can, say, mo mo uh, specify multiple tr properties on the same A, and basically do modifications based on that. So now we can also access the local start time lens. Yeah, this would also work. I produce local time. So this is called MTL. This this way of doing things. Uh, the thing you're working on, I'm I'm not sure. And what you could also do is like push this in a reader environment. Like. And, and, and now you don't even need to, need to give it as a variable anymore. You can just uh, view it. View time. And this is the same as get. But uh, view works on reader environments as well. So this is like can be used through your entire app. Um, so you can specify a function that only needs a username in some kind of reader environment. You don't know what reader environment. So this may be IO or this may be like a pure testing cases. You can do easily do dependency injection and whatever. So like the function becomes very flexible. If you only need a username, you can delete the restriction and the function becomes more flexible. And if you do need a username, then you can add the restriction. It becomes less flexible. But uh, I would be careful with polymorphism because the type errors become horrible. As in GHC doesn't know really how to help you. There's like no concrete path, path but we'll give the simple listic suit. A scalable approach because use it on records and plus fields. Uh, yeah, like this way of doing things uh, produces a lot of boilerplate. There's also techless final, which is finally techless or something. Maybe also of interest to you. Finally techless. Types. That's how it's What? <laughs> but um, essentially, what this is is a way of uh, structuring your code such that uh, you can extend it, even though you're not sure, like if it, without recompiling the original library. The family of tagless interpreters for higher order typed object language in a type meta language. For higher type meta. 
Right, sorry, make it into a Uh, let's see. Finish my image. Why is there nothing? That's the reason. Perfect. There we go. finish it later. Yeah, GTI part is mostly about being able to reload code in in migrating data types. Are generic. to Jason right so you want to like uh, actually make it for an interpreter it has gone well I would like look at that tagless tagless paper finally tagless because they are actually building an interpreter for like Haskell or ML which is a type metal uh a higher, higher order typed object language in a typed meta language. Ergo, they want to embed a typed language inside another typed language. Which is, I think, what you want to do as well. But yeah, it's a paper, so you know. Oh. 
Oh, they even have logic to combine. Products. In order. What is the E? Please will explain the name. Expect them to mention it somewhere. Okay, this is a random image, okay. Hmm. I don't know about that. Like, I know for a fact that that works really well with the... Uh, Furry stuff. Nice to use. If you know how to use it. The, uh, the docs are like really hard to follow. Hackage. Since I like get all my knowledge from Hackage. It... Like they have a lot of interaction going. That's because of Tactus Final stuff. Also type families. Great for obfuscation of dogs. I want to do like the update or something. You get like the SQL update. Okay, where do I use this thing then? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's just data. <laughs> so you have to like to find the function that uses this, which uh, can be hard. Maybe Google works for that. But they're also all generic, so that also is hard to search on. Decode generation and that sort of thing. But in practice, there are serious problems. Yeah, this is an SQL DSL. So once you figure it out, like the interaction becomes easier. But I struggled a lot with this one. Uh, it's much easier to get into uh, persistent, even though they use a lot of template Hasco. Uh, what am I doing? Where's the thing? Oh, it's not. Oh, it's messages, right? Right. Right. The messages which is just use function. A chance to read. I need to hide as if it's empty. I'm gonna do value recursion, alright. I gotta do that. Out. 
kill. Doesn't even need to. Right, this stuff needs. Right, and this is the display. Doesn't need to be. Just be throwing it away. What's oh, a button? Basically, it's an equation uh, I made to all kinds of stuff leak type languages. The tendency to first have generic representation for things like JSON into a domain specific type. Map it onto a domain specific type. Whereas dynamic languages, we always directly work with a generic representation. Ah! Generic. Quickly type languages, map string string or something. I think more than a dynamic language. Well, you could like be very generic and use all the land stuff, right? Like the the reason I'm pinning it down into types like this is just to. Easier for me to understand, mostly. But the library, for example, decided to use the magic. Paul, oh, by the way. Am I sending? I'm not sending. When dynamic is true, or hide it true. Yeah, in Python you would also like use directly the map and stuff, right? JavaScript uh, from JSON field. You could also do that in uh, Haskell, but you get a bunch of maybes back. You're not sure if it's in there. What I would then do then is like jam it in a mod. Just 
custom types needed. Will be a maybe, maybe just, and it wouldn't even feel because. Yeah, yeah. What you, you could also do is like use the maybe in a monad, and then. Uh, well, actually, you would make an either monad from. Wrap it. No, 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 you can't. Oh, you need to do that then. Do like from maybe. You can do like errors. Fail. Two fail. Create a little sum type. Use like record wild cards to just directly insert. It's kind of synced. I'm gonna do that and keep the da same data structure. Skull, how do I create a data declaration? You can auto take it. You can also, like, you know, F. If you want to do like uh, type errors at record level, you can do like cust either error, like that as type. And then you can do it per field, you get it defined, which will be uh, correct or which won't. Just actually really, really neat. You can FT a structural type so you can use type families to map another H map. Type families. <laughs> uh, type families. I got so confused last time I used type family. Or like back. Type level function. 
but um, oh, I wrote a lot. Yeah, type level function. Oh no 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 no! I did. We'll just check if it's empty or not. Message chain is empty, we'll add around it. That's as I said in Iris and TypeScript are more elegant. You could you have you have type families in TypeScript? What? <laughs> you mean pure script, I think. We've mapped types. Really? They really took their job serious. Uh, index type, yeah. statement oh what uh, you can do things like diff a b which takes an element a and minus element of b things like that although some soundness and practical limitations to map <laughs> soundness you have soundness problems <laughs> That's the point, if you get soundness problems. It's <laughs> like most practical cases. TypeScript isn't sound, okay. What? You mean they have like a bottom or something? And then you can always do that. Or like the system just... ...can be inconsistent. Right, that's every language, right? But like cog. Right, you have something that's incomplete. Supposed to find practical middle ground between types easily and specify and being useful. Yeah, but I mean, like, in many ways, Haskell is also not sound, right? Because you can just do undefined anywhere. And anything that evaluates this will just crash the program. Ergo, it's not sound. Even though it does compile. You need to give it like a little error.
The functional types allow both sub and separate types in R. Big thing is don't have variance annotation. The function types allow both sub and super types in argument. Oh, you can't disable inheritance. Right, so that's like the, the var variance we talked about last time. Yeah. It's her. Hey, this compiles. That's the thing is, JavaScript is full of dynamic APIs. Well, this is actually one of the reasons I just went to Reflex is because I didn't want to have the possibility of anyone ever importing like a crappy JavaScript library, which I can't trust. Like, uh, before you know it, you'll have jQuery in your code. You need to have like a lot of discipline in your team. Stop. There's no even no point in using jQuery anymore. You just use the native live, uh, native function calls. Pretty nice API. You can't express your notion of type arguments. Argument two, depending on type. Right, so you don't have fun apps. but you can do overloading in the same as a workaround. Generic. Like. You don't have fun depths. Actually, this is similar to container terms element. Are we having a delay? Time is it that you're Ah, not that bad. Like thirty seconds. Fine. I'm sure it's a left bit sound. Super useful though. How do you complete catch as many but
types we can have. Thanks. But like, if you use, Carla. I mean, like that's the same problem as Carla, right? Because you're in I/O anyway, any function. What's the point of using monads? Like the entire point of monads in Haskell is to get back to. Uh, imperative style programming. Like you need to recover it in Haskell. That's why we're using it. But in Scala, there's no, no point. You can just uh, put it, put anything below each other anyway. You have statements. You have immutability. It's fine. But in Haskell, you need to, you know, get around purity. There go monads. Or the, you need to like enforce in your team that everyone will do pure style. I just don't see that happening. It goes against human condition, I believe. Unless you have some kind of awesome discipline. Zio now. Oh yeah, the guy was actually talking about Zio a lot. Uh, like the programmer I sat next to during the uh, place I was looking at. I was like, I don't know. What? Let's look at it. Okay, this is the second time I'm, seeing, I I'm hearing about it, so it must be really good. Zero dependency Scala library for asynchronous and concurrent programming. Powered by uh, non-blocking fibers. That oh, this is um, coroutines. That I O. Why there are no docs? This thing pull request with all the docs. No heck, it's right. Wouldn't like dealing with, uh, they're not doing that, but dealing with modern transformers must be hell in Scala because you don't have that polymorphism going on, so you can't hack around it. It like automatically generated lifts and stuff like that. And of course, get around it maybe with implicit. This is a oh, <laughs> They built their own monad transformer thing or something? What is it? I am on it and thought that was awesome. Yes, I works around that sort of problem. Three monads. In fact, that's fine a lot more. Oh, they're actually doing it then, but okay. So yeah, they're also using reader for that. Also, error types are error types. 
value type. Oh, this is the value. Okay, I see. This is pure. I was looking at that as well, like this this kind of way of writing. So this is just a do block basically. <laughs> and these underscores, I was. <laughs> it was like he had like a fault going on, and I was asking like, "Oh, are you like uh, using the fault for um, evaluation?" Because sometimes if you do asynchronous stuff, the library may be lazy and you need to force evaluation. Uh, but no, no, he was using the underscores to fill in the first argument. Yeah, a yield is pure. Well, apparently this is becoming my job soon, so... <laughs> Better get used to this! <laughs> Uh, maybe you should ask the recruiter for a closure instead. It would be easier. Then I can use power edit and it can become more even more quick. Yeah, that takes a while to learn. Yeah, but uh, like I've already done most of the uh learning parts. You know? Back then? Four years ago, so it's more like a bit of memory. Those you was productive of <laughs> two weeks. That's pretty long, actually, right? Now that's yeah, that's like a medium. Like, were you familiar with Lisps at all? <laughs> that may be the case, yeah. Like, if I can do Hello World, I'm productive. Two hours, wow. So like the next step would be uh, maybe like opening a window or uh, setting up a web server or something. Alrighty game, what's up? Bells end up doing. Right. What do you mean about syntax? Like, there's a lot of syntax in Scala, but. I mean, I didn't do it that long. Had <laughs> Haskell and Java background. It's easy to learn to be able to write Scala the way you would write Java. But then you are better off using Kotlin. Oh, I thought like uh, Kotlin was like a baby Scala, like a little one for Android. It's not how they sold it to me at least, like because uh, they got around that problem with the huge text files. 
by just making the standard library smaller. And then fixed up a bit of syntax and got rid of implicits and that's about it. But the techniques. What I saw at least was just a bunch of combinated stuff. Why is this not working? Oh, I wanna comment. Like aside from... Okay, they're mixing um, object orientation with like... Functional style. What else is there to it? Like you just get a huge range of possibilities because we do that, but... I mean, I imagine that a lot of people also have like wildly different differentiating styles and stuff. Because you can do so much stuff with it. Anything is allowed. Kind of like C++ in that regard. C++ also basically supports everything. Yeah. Object functional programming. It's kind of a different part. Yeah, that uh, underscore thing is beautiful. Where, where, where did I see, see it? This one. Access. Oh, we're accessing the... This is view. It's generic lens. And then the first argument we get. The provider. Or is the environment maybe? Ah, it's the environment. And then on the environment, we call the getter database provider. And then we call another getter database. Because they ge generate these getters, I think. You can call them like that then. <laughs> I thought it was such an improvement. Not, be not having to write get every time. When I was younger. Get a warning. Apparently this is Lambda. Oh, she actually is Chromium. Oh, it's opening in the wrong one now.
Type in search. What's a function? <laughs> Access and partially apply. Yeah, just read it right. This is they making a function out of the class with apply? We learned that last time. You can also do it with objects. You were there. Uh, so you can make an, uh, a function out of any class by uh, implementing apply. Uh, it will magically become a function. I don't think any language does that. <laughs> uh, JavaScript, actually. Uh, yeah, JavaScript is the other way around. Like, any function will be an object. Alright, it's reader. Out, modify it. And here, don't <laughs> read It's bind. We are in go. Get the R. That's it. Thanks, Google. So this is the original thing. M of A, we get the A, then produce B. Errors? No, you're not even changing type. What's this thing? F map. F map. <laughs> R. Oh, it's an open. This is a. You can use the reader to write to the console. Effectively. There's a little gate into. Uh... It's almost like a combo net. No. 
Oh, you can temp like you can open up. You can ask a monadic environment. To Weird. Crappy bracket. Finally. Oh. I don't know what it is. Get the R. Renaton Zio. I'm gonna find this man. Look at that. <laughs> it's so not this. <laughs> result then we put in a list or something and then we push out the effect we get the resulting list uh, the modification getting closer No, it's not ask. It's definitely not ask. Because you can do side effects in that, and if you want to do that with reader, it will be hard. There's a co ask. writer writer Plus the, push the W inside the M. More like it. Well.
Look, it's gone. So we fixed that then. Um, I don't want to find it. Here somewhere. Hero. But it's all, it's all gone, right? It would be this one. Inner, inner, message switch. Get it now. Still, we need to get rid of these components. Can't change the environment. Yeah, but like reading. <laughs> okay, let's look at uh, read. So we get three functions, right? Uh, which would be our, which is basically, you have these three functions, then you are a reader. It's an interface. The best way to look at type classes. There's also some fun depths, but ignore that, please. Um, so the, f the first thing we can do is we can ask a variable out of the environment. So this means uh on it there. and we have like a so we have a function here. Oh it's type type of monet reader counter M M function now can ask and it will be a count to type and then you know it can can't modify this counter this can only get it out which will be a copy like, uh, I mean it will be immutable Anyway, because you know that. Oh, uh, sure. Both. Okay, local. And do is we get the counter, and then we can do something to the counter. Function to modify the environment. You have to run in the. Execute the computation in the modified. What? We can modify the counter. But I don't think this modifies the uh, uh, the counter inside this environment. We need to give it another reader, which will be modified. Since we're already in it, we can't do that. Finally, the thing we can do is reader, which will give us the counter. And now we can, for example, show it. And this will give us a string. But again, it's not modifying, not modifying anything, it's just Okay, wait, what are you saying, man? <laughs> I don't think it's right, or because you can't change the environment. Reader can't change the environment either. Console print line. Ask. You get the console. So what is console then? What type would, would you give it then? This function will return I.O. 
And you're not an IO monad, you're in a reader monad. I mean... In this case, you would be in a reader Can't do any IO. Actually ask and print line. Does not allow you to update the environment. But uh, printing printing is updating the environment, right? It's an IO action. So you can like write a file. You can write to a file and then uh, put like some value in there. And then read it later. Or you can like open a socket or whatever. Line. Yeah, which is IO. So? That's Scala maybe or something? Why would you have a console? I'm not finding it. At least you passed the dependency. So. Aren't an IO? Well, it's like I mean, it, it's 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 calling some C library, right? Which I mean, I'm just calling it IO. But uh, I mean FFI, like communicating with the world. Like you still have a kind of boundary with uh, memory man uh, manipulation inside the program itself and access calls and stuff like that. I don't, like, uh, there was a proposal in Scala, I believe, for effects. It's like on a dotty website. <laughs> but they considered it. They didn't actually do it. Oh, look at that record type. That's nice. I would be interested in that. They actually finished a lot. But they didn't do effects, so... Fortunately, we don't have that in Scala. Right, need to fix that. Oh, I mean, I, I think I call it. I use more this. What we do instead is lift normal stateful functions into a context in which we can simulate I.O. Well, like, okay, what, what does the I.O. Do, the I do then, according, like, uh, how do you see that for, uh, for you? As an actuality print line. It just runs immediately the effect. So what's the point then of like uh, adding that annotation IO? It's just to uh, tell the world. It's just like a um, style or something. Oh, 
I have a surprise for you, man. So you mean like the uh, about laziness? That's what you mean? Because yeah, I don't know how Haskell does that. Mean. Could do this. People get mad at you if you do this. You could do this. Oh, I see. Oh, I do that. It's not what it does. But I mean, like, in Scarlet, it's implied everywhere. That's what I mean. Like, I don't see the point of annotating things with IO. Or it's actually like doing something else. Then. Just innovate. <laughs> no! <laughs> Let's copy that library. <laughs> it's lazy, IO. Is it lazy, IO? But streams, so it's like pipes. That's IO. Monix. Better MTL tech is fine. Why are they like bothering at all with. <laughs> It's not Tackless Final. In Scala, this is often called Tackless Final style, especially when the type pluses have no law. I mean, I think these parentheses. Just... Etc. It's so hard to fi uh, find anything.
So this is a uh, ball in the house. Oh, it's an evil monad, right? But it makes fine parallel associate. Constructive strategy. This is invariant. Can't can change the way. Invariant. Just kind of an ironic name because it allows you to change variants. Could also be an invariant from A to B. Yeah. I claim. Yes. Function arrow is an invariant functor. <laughs> They're subtly different. <laughs> yeah, well, like, what, what else do you want me to compare it to? <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking uh, evil is different than fiber. Maybe this one is all, all only allowed to do routine. You mean routines? Now, now I'm comparing with Python, man. Runtime library. Right, so this is done by the JVM. <laughs> That's even. Right, they also have a, yeah, they also have a pretty good, uh... yeah, and Java, Java threading model is pretty good. One of the big advantages, Java over like by. Oh. Atomic. But this is our craft in now. I don't know that has gone. Atomic, blah blah blah. If I would do a lot of processing, I would. I could sell it too. It's like the, the language to go to for concurrency. Like. Interesting, I O R O. How it will. map to Haskell. Yeah, I don't. I don't know much about uh, Haskell concurrency anyway. So, or used to J. I I've done a lot of concurrency in Rust, but that's about it. Matrix. If you follow the rules of ZIO, yeah, it's um pretty classical. 
like yeah you have to have discipline and then everything should work out you need to read a lot of docs and whatever very lot like Haskell where you kind of throw yourself at it True green. I've seen it done once by a, uh, in a talk in Python. They were using like generators. And... You can figure with monads to do it. Anything to buy the code. <laughs> but you're basically building a compiler. That's actually like a pretty clever way of doing it. Hacky, but clever. Well, it's hacky because it's clever. Oh well, I'm gonna go uh, eat. I'll be back tonight probably. Oh, I have an ending screen. I have many people. That's um... So this will be ending. We all watched my, me painfully editing this stuff. And I'm gonna use it too. There we go. Look at that. Text. Maybe I'll actually uh, copy this. So we can uh There we go. All the stuff. Uh, let's see. So we'll rename this to uh, so I'm um, at some. Like Uh, branding stuff, which is why I want to do this. Uh. <laughs> That's like click follow. Excellent. Look at all this stuff now. Uh. 
Let's see. Uh, so we have uh, four people according to the thing. So maybe I'll do a raid. But yeah, it's IO's pretty powerful. Setups. But it can be a bunch of boiler plates. Yeah, like, uh, that's the thing with Scala, you need to type more, I think. Right? And apparently it doesn't map well. <laughs> Unfortunate, but... Hmm. Async accept, accept. Oh, that's... That's really good, right? That's uh, a problem with exceptions. I think I had a, that issue. Um, in C sharp or something. Couldn't find where exception was coming from, which thread. Which is problematic. Anyone online? Anything interesting happening? Living in a wheelchair. Data sign. Hmm. Basically, has a call classic exception. Well, I'm just gonna end it here, I think, because I can't find anything. Yeah, good talk, man. Had a bit of progress. I have an end screen now. Yes, I'll, I'll be uh, around at like. Uh, I think I'll be online. I, I say it every time, but uh, sometimes uh, stuff gets in between or whatever. Yeah. You, man. <laughs>